Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand for us technical analysis. If you're new, welcome, and if you're returning, welcome back. I really hope that every week you find the analysis, technical analysis, useful, as well as uh, some of the fundamentals. And if you want to skip to your favorite pairs, we have the uh, timestamp in the description box below along with the uh, technical analysis which is on my trading view channel so um, we'll start off with the fundamentals before we get into the technicals just uh, um, a uh, week ahead um, analysis from uh, trading economics which is a great site tradingeconomics.com um, if you're into fundamentals definitely um, uh, use this uh, this site along with others like Forex Factory as well. But in the week ahead, we have the US publishing the jobs report, all right, so non farm payrolls. Um, last time came out way below expected, but that was, I think that was due to um, the uh, bad weather. So um, we're expecting obviously something a lot higher um, figure wise this uh, this time around, this, this month. And if it isn't, then um, something really is wrong potentially with the uh, jobs market and that would probably lead to um, fears or confirming certain fears about the uh, slowdown in the US uh, GDP and uh, potentially heading into a recession which um, I'm not buying just yet I mean probably is um, there are economic cycles but uh, there are other countries that are much worse off than the uh, US at the moment but anyways um, so you've got uh, ISM PMIs, ADP employment, retail sales, durable goods and construction spending elsewhere. The Reserve Bank of Australia and I think that's the Reserve Bank of India will decide on the monetary policy. It's quite important. Other important data include UK market PMIs, Eurozone inflation, Germany factory orders and industrial output, Japan business morale and China Kaxin. I think that's how you pronounce it, PMIs. Again, that China PMIs will be... Um, quite important as well eurozone inflation um is uh going to be another one but um with uh with brexit being extended and um uh, again some uncertainty uh not too sure whether that's going to be um you know really that market moving um again if you want to know probably more a bit, bit more about fundamentals you can go to the fundamental analysis course the link is in the description box below and it'll bring you to this page which is my fundamental and sentiment analysis trading course where I go over pretty much what you need to know about fundamental and uh, sentiment analysis, which is risk on and risk off, right? If you click on that spreadsheet, it brings you to here. And uh, this is just a spreadsheet where I give you my opinion on what currency I am bullish and bearish. And there's varying degrees of bullish and bearishness depending on the strength, the US dollar being number one overall if you understand uh, GDP, inflation, and interest rates. So uh, yeah, this is only for uh, risk on, so fundamentals, it doesn't take into account risk off um, sentiment, by the way. So uh, even though I uh, am bullish on the dollar, I could be definitely bullish on the yen if it is a risk off environment. So let's get into the technical analysis and start off on the Dow Jones dollar index as we always do every week and the Dow Jones dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against uh, some of the major currencies like the pound, the yen and the euro and the Australian dollar. And um, last week, if we zoom in a little bit, we were pretty much in between um, this supply zone and, uh, and the top end of this uh, demand zone and uh, actually dollar strength, as you can already guess, came into the market and now we're up to this uh, uh, this supply zone here. So um, let's look at a uh, price chart in real time. And let's see if we can amend some of these zones. All right, so right now I think everything is still pretty much the same. We have come up into this um, supply zone here and we also have some diagonal resistance which prices is reacting from all right if you believe that the uh the dollar will get uh weaker and potentially again going into non-farm payrolls and some other data we could see you know 
the dollar selling off around here or at that level of horizontal uh, resistance within this overall supply zone even though it has been touched several times you could see a bit of a, a sell-off and again coming down into this demand zone I'd probably wait more for uh, if I was looking to be a buyer of the dollar I'd be looking for um, prices to really kind of come down to here or down into this zone doesn't mean that obviously um, if we get some good news and price starts to rally from here that I won't be a buyer of the dollar, not necessarily the dollar index, but I'll be buying the um, the dollar, um, yen, dollar Swiss, depending on obviously the uh, risk off and risk on sentiment, you know, dollar CAD, etc. So right now, um, it's more again to do with fundamentals. You'd be waiting for prices really, um, the catalyst um, to react um, from probably from non-farm payrolls and that will probably determine the direction into this week um, so let's have a look at the next pair which is the dollar yen and again from last week I was expecting more risk off sentiment to really come into the market but yet he came down into uh, this demand zone here touching it then we reacted and again that just confirmed on the, uh, the dollar index so we've pretty much come up into this area here of supply and uh, I still think that risk should be more off than on so going to dollar yen and zooming in a little bit what we could have this week if the dollar index starts to sell off, then you'll get a move like this. Um, if risk remains on or there is some dollar strength that comes into the market, I don't really expect this supply zone to really hold. This would be where you'd be looking at probably entering short at the highs of the market, right? Um, looking at probably some buying opportunities. Again, you'd have to wait for a pullback on the dollar index and then for buying opportunities here or here but um, overall I think the dollar is obviously the the, uh, the dominant currency and uh, I'll be waiting for you know potential pullbacks I'm not a breakout trader breakout traders are the ones that usually get caught out on the wrong side of the market so um, if anything what you'd have to do is wait for prices to really come up into this zone if you're looking to be a buyer with a dollar that would create what we would know as the demand zone right here and then wait for a pullback into that demand zone before looking at getting long at the moment it hasn't quite created a strong enough demand zone there is demand here but I'm not going to put it on on this uh, uh, on the chart just yet I want it to really kind of break this uh, supply zone before I think about putting that demand zone on there so those are your options for the dollar yen moving on to the dollar swiss and the dollar swiss from last week zoom in a little bit again we came down into this demand zone here <coughs> risk being more off than on but um the dollar uh strengthening still in risk off environments we did get a bit of a move and a bit of reaction so there was uh, some opportunities to get long on lower time frames and still potentially um, uh, on this currency pair I prefer I prefer for prices to really kind of come down to this 98 you know number here before looking at establishing some long trades even though this is a decent setup you've got enough you know movement to the upside in order to capture some decent pips so uh, let's look at what potentially could be going on this week the dollar yen yeah so if you are looking to buy the dollar you could be looking for a bit of a pullback even though this level's touched once twice several times the weaker that that demand zone will probably end up becoming if it does touch this zone again so I'd probably be waiting for prices to come down to this area this 98 round number before looking at establishing any long positions um, 
if you're looking to get short, then this is going to be the first area to look to get short unless prices make a lower low and a lower high. And then you'd be waiting for prices to come back into this level here before looking at getting short. Yeah. So you'd wait for a lower low that create the lower high prices come up. This becomes your supply zone and then you'd look for short trades. But um, with the uh, dollar strength at the moment, um, I'll be looking for just basically pullbacks, um, you know, into uh, demand zones. This demand zone being the best. If prices do come up, then I'll be waiting for a pullback into another demand zone before looking to get long. Um, moving on to the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD what we had was prices come up into this supply zone sold off a little bit and it sold off again um, oil you know strengthening you know going from strength to strength so um, after a bit of a trending market you can expect prices to enter into um, you know a, uh, a ranging market you know price acceptance at the moment the 1.345 level is uh, where traders seem to feel that this is an, ex an expensive area for the uh, for the dollar um, against the CAD if you are looking to be a buyer let's go to the chart I'm waiting for a pullback into this zone which is decent you also have level right here where you have some horizontal support and resistance where you've got resistance 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 bit of support there bit of support here within that demand zone which adds to the confluence you also have a bit of dynamic sorry diagonal support but not within that zone so I'm not going to put it on there and then we also can look at dynamic support and resistance within this area you've got the 100 moving averages within this area and let's see if you've got any yeah you've got the 50 as well within this area so this demand zone looks decent for a good buy i would say just make sure that oil is uh, selling off before you look to uh, to buy this currency pair now moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. So again, we came up into this supply zone, this higher supply zone, right? We put in a bit of a pin bar. There was an opportunity to get short again from this uh, potential double top. I did mention that last week and uh, we did sell off dollar strength, um, US dollar strength, New Zealand dollar. Um, was pretty dovish with their uh, their uh, Reserve Bank of New Zealand statement um, potential hinting at a rate cut so uh, you can see that price is pretty much sold off taking out this demand zone right here so let's look at removing some levels right here that gets removed what I'll do is I'll just adjust this supply zone as well right so supply zone is going to be right here so supply and again if prices come back up to this area here this is where you'll be looking at selling from buy perspective I think anywhere around here is a decent buy if you're looking at buying a New Zealand dollar that is you'd have to think really kind of um, think that the New Zealand dollar um, is gonna you know gain in strength or the US dollar is gonna you know weaken there could be some potential weakening with the US dollar depending on non-farm payroll news so around these uh, horiz um, horizontal support levels within these wider area of demand are decent areas to look for some uh, some long trades and again we have the confluence of this uh, diagonal um, support let's look at maybe some moving averages we've got 
got really the uh, one of the 200 moving averages below there and then the 50 and the 100 I think is going to be way above yeah so not really much di uh, dynamic support um, you know supporting the uh, New Zealand dollar but um, if I was a uh, betting man I'd probably be waiting for prices to really come back up to you know this area here before looking to get short if prices do if not then um, <clears throat> wait for lower highs lower lows so for example if prices make a move like that wait for price to come back up into this area here and then look for a short trade moving on to the pound dollar and the pound dollar has been uh, really no fireworks this week in fact it's uh, sold off obviously with the uh, whole Brexit um, uh, negotiations really not going great but uh, you know being extended um, there's still a bit of certainty um, you know and it's still a chance that the U, you know the UK can stay within um, the, uh, the, the, the there's a deal potentially on the table or some type of deal anyway um, again you can see that reflected in price and we've really just come down into this lower area so if we're looking at what potentially could be happening this week let's clean up the charts we can get rid of that I probably expect prices to not really hold we've touched this ones once twice and now the third time so the third touch usually um, um, it can work but it's not a higher probability trade like it would be on the first or potentially the second touch the third touch um, wouldn't be for me if I was looking to buy the uh, pound if I was looking to buy the pound it would have to be a move probably down here before looking to get long from a uh, short trade buying the dollar this is where you'd be looking at really the first area to look to buy the dollar is going to be right around here we also have what looks like a decent area of horizontal resistance support support bit of resistance here so within this around this 1.32 level could be a decent selling opportunity on the pound but again this is very sentiment driven at the moment this currency pair um, the British pound so uh, just be careful when it comes to uh, um, you know uh, putting potential all of your you know normal risk probably go down to maybe half or quarter position size because um, anything can really happen on the British pound euro dollar so last week I ended up taking hitting profits on this uh, on this currency pair and I'll actually show you that as well so I uh, ended up getting short right here and ended up taking profits around here this week um, it was a nice uh, I think about a four to one trade again this is more of a fundamental and sentiment play US being the stronger currency euro being very weak and uncertain um, around Brexit so uh, let's get into um, some of the analysis and uh, I'll show you the trade setup in a sec so we made lower lows lower highs now that supply zone there we do have a bit of demand I say a bit but it was quite a wide zone of demand which is right here but I didn't want to put it on there um, but anywhere around here I would say is decent um, decent for a, uh, a long trade if you're looking to get long now from a trade setup perspective this is what I got in from that entry right there oh wrong one and you can look at uh, last week's video as well and to have a look All right and my target was from the low to the high and around uh, 
80% of that move. So this was where it's a decent three to one trade, not a four to one trade. Three to one trade right here, where the uh, you know prices pretty much ended up coming down and uh, hitting target right here. And I do go over you know my uh, how I um, you know basically. Uh, determine targets in a uh, in a video which um, I'll leave in the description box below I can't remember the title of it but um, I talk about the Australian dollar and targets and I'll leave a um, like I said I'll leave a link in the description box below so my usually I go for either 50% or the 80% um, uh, 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 retracement for uh, for my targets and uh, gives me gave me a nice a nice risk reward trade on that so going forward now again you'd probably be looking at either any kind of buy trade around this 1.12 level personally I'm not looking to buy the euro I'll be looking to sell so that would be the first area right there to look for a sell trade and as you made lower highs and lower lows right there that would be the next level we've got a bit of I would say horizontal support um, around that area uh, nothing major I guess maybe on the lower time frame there probably would be something around here you can kind of see it around there yeah I'll keep it like that so if we get a bit of a pullback into this 1.13 and we see you know decent price action then I'll be looking at um, getting short right here any long trades right now if you think that the dollar is going to weaken against the euro um, would be this would be the uh, really the area to look for any kind of uh, long trades um, moving on to the euro yen Euro yen, so from last week, I actually ended up getting out of this trade as well, taking profits. And we pretty much just went sideways, risk off. Let me just zoom in a little bit. So we ended up getting in short around here. And this was uh, this was the four to one trade um, that we ended up getting in. And uh, prices this week pretty much just went sideways. So st started the week from here ended the week at this 1.24 level um, let's have a look at the chart so again there was an opportunity to potentially buy the euro um, lower time frame charts but again we are, I think the risk being um, more on than sorry more off than on um, I can't see really the, the euro rallying for any any particular reason <laughs> But if you do want to be a buyer, now is pretty much the time to look for buy trades. If you're looking for a sell trade, you'd have to wait, either wait for price to really come all the way up, back up to here, um, or create lower lows, lower highs, and then look for a short trade around here, which is probably the probably what is more likely to happen. But again, depending on what happens with you know risk sentiment. So uh, again, just a quick recap of the actual trade that we ended up getting in on so this was the candle here candle right there stopped just above the high and it was a retracement from from this low this demand zone to that high originally I was actually planning on um on holding this trade but um, I thought I'd take some profits just below the 80% matter of fact so a uh, decent trade right there from that high and that supply zone up there to the lows right there so um, a decent trade this week as well moving on to the Australian dollar US dollar And this week, again, we pretty much just moved sideways. 
not much, you know, price movement. Maybe what are you looking at? Um, Seventy, sixty-eight. You know, maybe about less than, less than really a hundred pips of price movement this week. Prices, you know, have just been um, going sideways. They've been really um, quite low volatility um, in the market over the past uh, quite a few months. Um, so really, there was an opportunity to potentially get long here day trading opportunities. Let's go into into that. So again, buying round here. If you was maybe looking at an hourly time frame chart, this is where you would have been potentially looking to buy around here, or would it was it around here, somewhere around here anyway. Actually, it was this week. So um, looking at any potential buying opportunities. But I don't really trade the daily, I mean, the uh, hourly. So um, for me, there really wasn't any buying opportunity and I wouldn't really be buying the Australian dollar either. I'm looking for, you know, sell trades um, if I'm looking to get in on this uh, currency pair. So look for sell trades around here. There are buying opportunities at the moment, um, but I'm just not convinced with the Australian dollar. But again, we do have the um, RBA statement this week, and if they are um, a bit more hawkish or a bit more neutral, we could see prices, you know, rise. But my uh, my estimation is that they want a weaker Australian dollar, so you probably could see prices end up um, selling off potentially. So um, just I would say probably hold fire on your uh, on your buy trades, or if you are going to get in long then just enter a really kind of short position, a small position, I should say. You know, maybe a quarter position or, or a half position. Um, but uh, personally, I've been looking at um, short trades on this currency pair. And finally, we have the Aussie Yen. And the Aussie Yen, again this week, not much movement price wise there was a bit matter of fact only a little bit we did get a bit of a spike up prices came back down reacting off of this supply zone and then we're really in between the range so the range being from this high to this low we're pretty much halfway which is fair value so let's look at this price chart so prices at the moment are being contained between that high and that low and um, so this is really since the 5th of February 8th of February prices are really in between that so we're just really around a uh, fair value um, Australian dollar Japanese yen being a measure of uh, risk sentiment so um, at the moment it's very it's quite difficult to to tell from a, from this currency pair um, you know there's no really no direction when it comes to risk even though there are um, several risk um, factors going on again Brexit Trump trade wars there's going to be some European elections uh, going on as well so um, if I was uh, looking to get involved in this it'd probably be to the short side with uh, with the uncertainty I don't really like buying the Japanese yen but um, risk off environment you'd have to be looking for prices you know to to go short but um, if you are looking at buying the Australian dollar, again, depending on what they, the RBA say this week, this could be a decent buying opportunity. You'd have to wait for prices to really kind of come down. Um, that's it for this week. I um, hope you enjoyed the, uh, the analysis. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And if you do have any questions regarding supply and demand, um, definitely uh, send them in the uh, in, in the description box below or uh, you can email them to me at info at trading180.com. Hope you guys have a great trading week and take care.